What is going on everyone? It is me Blurry here, back with another video. Has been a while since I have uploaded. Um, you know, I've still been going through withdrawals. Um, I lost my, you know, kind of job in real life, so now YouTube's really the only income I have. So I'm pretty much just looking for another job, and in the meantime, while I do that, I'm just going to be posting a ton of videos, because um, <laughs> I'm only going to be able to eat off YouTube, basically, and uh, yeah, so I, you know, I may as well post videos, may as well post more, see if I can get the ball rolling, see what happens. I want to shout out the channel members. We have a new one, the Couples on Anno. I'm pretty sure that's how you would say it. Um, and Jonathan Swartz, J Mac, and Pepe Harambe. Uh, thank you to all the channel members. These guys have been like, like J Mac and Jonathan Swartz. They're both like been channel members for I think like ten months. So it's just absolutely ridiculous. Those guys are. They're just insane. And Pepe Harambe. Jonathan, J Mag, and Pepe Harambe. All three of them. They've been members for so long. And uh, welcome the couples and Arno. But anyway, today we have a. I would assume this would be a terrifying trait report. So, a terrifying trait report on DPH. So, we haven't had a DPH one for a little while. So, it's one of your guys' favorite drugs to hear about. You know, you guys love the diamond hydrana, the diphenhydramine, and the Dutura, the big free that we have on this channel, the big free that you guys absolutely love. So, without further ado, guys, let's get into this one. This one is going to be a long report. It's going to be a nice, long video. So, sit back, grab some popcorn, guys, and let's get right into it, guys. Let's just enjoy this story. Hey, Blurry. I'm the guy on Instagram with the Delirium Report. Like I said, feel free to make a video on this story if you like it. I'd just rather remain anonymous. Great channel bro, you do good and important work with harm reduction. I'd hope nobody would be stupid enough to try this like I was at the time. Hopefully this story makes them think otherwise. Then we have the title, Delirious in Class and Meeting Johnny Depp. The dose was 450 milligrams, 30 15 milligram tablets. Let's get into it guys. I was a bored 15 year old at the time. I had heard of taking large doses of Benadryl to induce a hallucinogenic trip. My only prior experience with drugs was marijuana and morning glory seeds. They contain a substance similar to LSD, but the experience is closer to mushrooms. Being the young naive teenager I was, I went into this experience with little research. All I knew was that my dosage wasn't enough to kill me and that's all I cared about at the time. Looking back, I realized just how foolish this was. I am thankful that my dosage was relatively low, as I'd later come to find I was extremely sensitive to this stuff, and if I had taken any more, I may have been tripping for even longer than I did. 7pm. A Wednesday night. The school year was coming to an end, but not over yet. I wanted to get high, but didn't have very much pot. I decided it would be a good idea to take a large dose of DPH and explore the world of delirium. I swallowed my 15 little pink pills and settled into my computer chair to wait for the effects. The first thing I noticed was an all-encompassing sense of impending doom, coupled by a sense of lethargy and weakness, like my muscles were made out of jello. I've used DPH for insomnia before. But at this dose, I was little in the way of sleepiness. I was on high alert. I couldn't have slept if I tried. The screen became so impossible to focus on, so I retired to my bed to put on some TV. I don't remember what was on the TV at the time, but I do remember not caring much for watching it. I realized that all the TV really was was just a box that flashed lights and made noise. I was bored but whatever was playing and was having trouble following it. This was when the memory issues first set in. 8pm. The visuals began. I noticed a trail of ants crawling ar across my bed. I followed the trail, which led to a gaping hole in the corner of my ceiling just above my bed. The hole was impossibly dark, like a black hole deep in the cosmos. Not even light could escape its clutches. The ants were spewing out of the hole by the thousands. It is important to note now just how different this experience is from a classic psychedelic one. I had no idea that these visuals weren't real. They were extremely realistic. 
unlike the general fractals and colours of a psychedelic trip. These were full-on delusions. My mental state also began to change. My mind was extremely scattered. My thoughts did not make sense and my memory had all but vanished. My consciousness and unconsciousness, mind became one. And all my unconscious thoughts seeped into reality and took hold of my perspective on the world. I would forget I would forget my thoughts as I was thinking them and was having nonsensical ideas in my head. Entirely random things to the effect of what time does it say on the chicken or I should go to the park to get some groceries. It felt kind of like what I'd imagined being senile or having dementia to be like. My mind was playing tricks on me and was making me look like a fool. I'd forgotten that I had even done a drug and was taking each thought as an illusion as reality. I imagine this is how it feels to be old and in hospital. It felt like my brain had been rolled flat with a rolling pin. It's impossible to explain just how powerful the perception changes were. Everything I saw seemed real and, in my mind, my thoughts were made total sense even though they were the thoughts of an insane person. I'm extremely lucky that I did not hurt myself or anyone else. 10 p.m. I have no idea where this time went, but I jumped forward two full hours in time. I assume I had just been staring at the gaping hole in my ceiling the entire time. Now that my parents had gone to bed, I decided it was safe to venture beyond my room and see if I could not deal with these ants. My solution to the ants was to take a cup and begin scooping the imaginary ants into the cup. Granted, I thought they were real. I would take my cup full of ants into the bathroom where I would fill it with water and dump it out into my sink. What was really strange was that upon returning to the bathroom with more ants in my cup, the ants I had dumped prior were still there in the sink. This is very unusual, as usually hallucinations are fleeting and will vanish if you look away for just a second. At one point, I was staring at myself in the mirror and my vision was sucked into the mirror. I couldn't look away. For just a second, at one point, I was staring at myself in the mirror and my vision was sucked. What the hell? I just read that part. I just watched as my face morphed into many different faces. Some were familiar to me and some were faces I had never seen before. I looked absolutely insane, like an animal. My pupils were more dilated than ever and my expression was one of some wild creature. After many trips back and forth, I returned to my room and the hole in my ceiling and the ants had disappeared, and I realized it must have been a hallucination, and it soon left my thoughts. I had been going back and forth between my rooms and the bathroom for two full hours, dumping these imaginary ants into my sink and was relieved that it was over. The paint on the walls looked wet and was running down the walls like blood. Whenever I would look at my hands, they would shrivel up and turn black until my fingers resembled pipe cleaners. This persisted well into the trip. I remember the hairs on my body would start to grow and curl. They looked unhealthy and covered in grease, like the hairs on some large spider. They were spindly and thick, very disturbing. 12 AM. My memory is extremely foggy. But I do remember various people coming into my room to speak with me. Among them were many of my friends, my girlfriend, my father, and my dead grandmother. I was very close with all of these people. I would begin talking to them, and they would talk back to me, but I can't remember any of the conversations, and as suddenly as they would appear, they would vanish. I took this in stride, I thought it was all real. In my hypnotic state, it did not frighten me that these ghosts of my past were coming and going. It made perfect sense to me that these visitors were coming, and I, a generally unsocial person, welcomed them all into my room and was happy to converse with them. This is strange, because I typically do not allow anyone into my bedroom except for my girlfriend and my parents on occasion, it being my sanctuary. I remember sharing cigarettes and marijuana joints with these phantoms. But of course, this was another hallucination. 2 a.m. 
These conversations persisted well into the night when I heard my father's voice at my door. He told me to put my shoes on as we were going to go somewhere. I obeyed, somehow I managed to get one shoe on, but I could not tie it. I gave up on putting my other shoe on and went into the living room. My mother was there. She was actually there in the living room and I asked her where we were going. I must have looked insane. My pupils were the size of saucers and I had one shoe on, laces tra trailing behind me. She was concerned, but nothing ever came of her seeing me that night. I assume she probably thought I was sleepwalking. She gently asked me to go back to bed and we did not speak of it for years until I later came clean to her about my drug use. At this point I attempted to sleep, but it was a fleeting sleep. I don't think I slept at all, actually just lay there with my eyes closed. I felt my eyes rapidly moving behind my eyelids, like REM sleep. This rapid movement of my eyes lasted for months after the trip. Anytime I closed them, this would happen. I was also plagued with alarming spasms in my body. It felt like I was on the verge of having a seizure. Throughout the night, I was hearing things, my mother's laughter from the other room, strange whispers and conversations, and a scratching from inside the wall just beside my bed, like something with freakishly long nails was scraping the wall right where I slept. I saw this being very clearly inside my head. A vaguely human-shaped being with pale wrinkled skin and gaping holes for eye sockets. I believe it to be a demon or dark spirit who was ch chaffering me through this chaotic experience. The usher of my madness. It felt as if this being was always with me, always close by, and that the drug was causing my consciousness energy to resonate at a lower frequency a frequency that this being was able to more easily tap into and control. The next part of my story is where things go from bad to worse. My dosage was not extreme, even in, in comparison to my weight, and everything that I had read up to this point said that the effects would only last 7 to 10 hours. Little did I know I was going to be tripping for closer to 21 whole hours. 7 a.m. I got up with my alarm and felt entirely normal. My dad was home, which I found odd. Maybe he stayed home to make sure I was okay after my mum had seen me last night. Thankfully, I felt completely fine and was coherent. The hallucinations had subsided and my head was totally clear, but this didn't last for long. I got ready for class with no problem, showering and brushing my teeth. I felt the effects coming back on as I made my way to the bus stop, standing there in the early morning hours. It was a cloudy, foggy morning, and I felt a creeping sense of being watched from somewhere in the mist. I saw wasps dancing in the fog. There was a kid who sometimes came to my bus stop. I saw him there and spoke with him, but eventually I realized that he wasn't actually there and that I was all alone. I saw the headlights of my bus through the fog and I climbed abroad. The effects ramped back up throughout the ride and upon my arrival at school, I was fully immersed in my delirium. My recollection of these events is much better than of the night, but still foggy. My bus always arrived at school early. I went upstairs to sit by myself. I was always a loner and I figured it would be best if I laid low as much as possible. I was somewhat conscious of my state and I realized the possibility of being caught, especially with my eyes the size of saucers and my incoherent speech. As I sat alone, I saw smoke or wisps dancing across the floor, like translucent filaments of vapor that were flashing and blinking like lightning. As I watched the dancing wisps in the floor, I was approached by none other than Johnny Depp. He sat next to me and we began speaking about what it was that I was seeing in the floor. He was wearing the Jack Sparrow outfit from Pirates of the Caribbean and speaking in the manner that Jack Sparrow would. We spoke for some time. I was thrilled to be speaking to Johnny Depp, but as quickly as he appeared, he vanished, leaving me alone in the hallway. It was then that I realized just how hard I was still feeling the effects 
Not only was I still seeing people, but I didn't question the absurdity of seeing Johnny Depp in my small town high school after he had vanished. A couple kids walked by and they saw me and laughed, talking about how messed up I looked. This may have been real or it may have not, I still don't know. 8am. The school bell rang and I made my way to class. I sat in the back next to my friend. It was a blow off class so we just talked the whole hour. I told him what I did the previous night and I shared with him that I was anxious that I had not yet come down. He spent the whole hour fucking with me. At one point I was holding my phone on my desk at a slight angle. I saw a shadow appear underneath my phone and as I lifted my phone, a frog leapt from the shadows and across my desk. My hand shot out to grab the frog and my friend saw. He laughed and called me a tweaker. Class ended shortly after. 9am. This was my chemistry class and we had group work that day. I grouped up with some friends and we started working. It didn't take them long to notice something was wrong with me, but they kept it to themselves. Looking down at my work, I realized that I could still barely read. The letters on the paper were blurry. Oh, blurry. If I get close enough, I could read them. But it was difficult and the words I read weren't necessarily what was actually on the page. Each letter had a strange rainbow glow all around it. And at one point, this fringe of rainbows morphed into a sprawling pile of rainbow colored maggots that rifed on my paper. I still somehow managed to do my work, but when I read over it the next day, it was total nonsense. The question was about valence electrons and I had written something about kids going to school on the school bus, strange to say at the least. I had written an entire mathical equation about how long it would take the school bus to drive from the bus stop to the school with a certain number of kids on it. This equation was not mathematically accurate in the slightest. 10am. My English class. The teacher was an older man. He was a cool guy but he wouldn't have been okay with me tweaking in class. I sat near some stoner kids in this class and I told them about what was happening to me. I started to feel tired, so I laid my head down to sleep. The teacher called on me and asked why I was sleeping during his lesson. I looked up, but thankfully my classmates interjected and told my teacher that I wasn't feeling well, so he let off and let me go back into my rest. Had they not spoken up for me, I probably would have responded with nonsense and been found out, then taken to the hospital to have my stomach pumped and to have a catheter shoved up my penis. This thought still gives me chills. I can't imagine the horror of experiencing a hospital on this shit. 11am. Geometry. I had a quiz that day. I was one of the first, uh, one of the last to finish, but I still managed to get a 48%. Not bad for my complete state of mental retardation. I was able to make the test up the next day, thankfully. 12 p.m. Lunchtime. I didn't eat because school food was abysmal and because I had no car. Plus, I wouldn't want to have gotten on the road in my state anyways. I didn't eat. Instead, I sat alone and tried to text my girlfriend from another school nearby. We were talking, but even over text, she knew something was wrong with me. Her messages changed in my head. They twisted into very hateful walls of text that targeted my deepest insecurities. I started to say mean things back to her. I thought she was actually saying these things. But going back, she had said nothing of the sort. She was concerned for me. Thankfully, she is very understanding and did not hold it against me. 3pm. I don't remember much of what happened between lunch and when the final bell rung and we all got to go home. But I do remember that aside from my severe inhibited mental state, my trip was essentially over at this point. All that remained was confusion, incoherence, and an ability to read. I arrived home and snuck into the yard to smoke some pot. This made some of the effects ramp back up, but it also made me sleepy. My mum came home and tried to talk to me. In response, I said some random nonsense about lotion which had nothing to do with the question she asked me. She was confused, but I managed to play it off as me being tired, and I went off to my room. 
where I slept until the next morning. It was finally over at this point, but this experience will stick with me forever. In conclusion, I was extremely lucky that nobody caught me. It was probably one in a million that I wasn't found, and if I had been caught, I would have been in a world of hurt, carted out of school on a gurney to have my stomach pumped. It probably would have made the experience more traumatic. Plus, I would have been in a lot of trouble with my parents and my school. I had no idea that the drug would make me trip for nearly 24 hours, and I think that's important to know. Some days, even five years later, I still feel like it affects my memory and my thought process. I also now have photophobia, or an aversion to bright light. This makes it difficult to see during the daytime, and I hardly go out before dark. Sometimes I feel like this drug made me into some weird, vampiric recluse. Drugs are unpredictable, and they can affect you in ways you are not prepared to deal with. Best to leave the Benadryl for allergy relief, as it was designed for. Do not try this shit. I got off lucky. You may not. Well, there we have it, guys. That was the uh, experience. That was a pretty nice trip report. Uh, definitely uh, an entertaining one. I will say so myself. Um, I'm definitely very surprised as well. This guy didn't get caught because, I mean, that's just bonkers. Like, if, thinking back to when I went to school, if I was... You know, even when I was just high, and I smoked weed, like, every day, so I, you know, I I wasn't too visibly high, you know, I didn't act different, I'm, my eyes just m may have looked a tiny bit different, that was literally the only difference in my my personality, but they would still know I was high, and they would say sometimes, you know, they wouldn't get angry at me, but they would just say, you know, sometimes they would talk to me about you know, smoking weed and why I shouldn't do it, like, in, in private, right, but, you know, so if I was there on, on a fucking delirium, they would sure notice me and kind of, you know, they'd, they'd definitely talk to me because, you know, they see me every day. So they would notice the difference, you know, 100%. And they, they would say something to me. So I'm very surprised no one said a thing to this guy. Um, it's definitely, definitely lucky. And, you know, it, it all turned out well for him, though, you know. Uh, it didn't sound like he liked it that much. You know, it seemed like he kind of just wanted it to be out uh, over because, you know, it, it was a very long experience. But, I mean, it did all go well for him. I obviously don't do the drug. I'm not saying it went well for him, so you can do it too. But, um, you know, I'm just saying at least it wasn't terrible. But, you know, he did say he got had some maybe long-term effects come from it. So, that's not good. Um, and speaking of delirians, I know this isn't really a delirium, I don't think. But, um, primethazine, um, I've had kind of, I would say a delirium-ish trip. Uh, recently, just from drinking lean, because it's, you know, well, it's not all lean's mix of promethazine, but, um, the one I always drink is DHC, dihydrocodine, and I, I mix it with promethazine, and I had a fuck ton, I had like, um, I had like 800 to almost 1,000 milligrams, I think, of dihydrocodine, and then I had like 400 to uh, maybe even 500 milligrams of promethazine on top, and I was fucking bonkers, I, bonkers fucked, I'm trying to put together a story for it, a personal life story, um, but I need to, uh, talk to the friends I was with at the time, and talk to my girlfriend, and talk to the other people who seen us while we were fucked up, because we were also on Xanax as well, and just something about the promethazine and, and, uh, codeine, when I just do that alone, um, I have a hard time trying to remember what happened, and, it was bonkers, man, we were talking to people that weren't fucking there, um, that was probably, that, that was probably the most bonkers thing, but, and it's also just really hard to remember the delusions you see on promethazine, I don't know if that's just me, but, I mean, that's what I got from it, but, yeah, look forward to that, guys, a personal delirium-ish report, I guess you could say, yeah, I, I mean, it's pretty much just a lean report, let's be real, hallucinating on lean, so, look forward to that report, guys, that's coming soon, um, it, it, it's going to be a good one. It's a multi-day report, so it should be a very long one. Uh, if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like. You know, it's my first video back in a while, so please smash a like for me. Leave a comment down below. And, um, yeah, as I said at the start, um, I, you know, I don't have a job right now. I'm looking for another job. So in the meantime, you know, I'm going to be living off of YouTube revenue, um, which <laughs> it's not... 
it's basically nothing, okay? I, I do have a bit of money saved, so I'm chill, I'm chill, you know, but I'm, I'm going to try and just live off of what YouTube pays me, which is like uh, around 230 US dollars a month. So, <laughs> it's not a lot, but I could make do with it if I'm very, 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 very careful about how I spend money. Like, if I only literally eat um, sandwiches with peanut butter and two-minute noodles. That's that's what I'm going for. So I'm gonna be living off of that while looking for another job. So I was like, fuck it, I need to get back into the videos and um Yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna apologize again for the break I took. It was a long break. Ah uh, damn, I'm so I regret having the break and not uploading so damn much. I really do. But at the same time, um it was probably good for my mental health while I was going through the benzo withdrawals and you know tapering down off of Xanax because it's fucking terrible. I I'm just going to say that right now. You know, I haven't really spoke about it on any of my social media or Discord, but the withdrawals, they are just they're bad. Okay, they're definitely bad. And each time you taper down to a the dose below it in your in your taper program it's like a bad five days like you have five days of like depression anxiety you're like crying for no fucking reason you, you can't sleep you can't eat it's just so many fucking things that just fuck up your life and that's another reason why I, you, know, you know i didn't i couldn't basically work or do my job because of it and it, it's just it's fuck shit up, guys. That's all I'm going to say. I, I apologize for it, but I'm coming down to the end of the taper. I was on 4 milligrams daily around a month and a half ago. Now I'm taking 0 0.5 milligrams daily. So that's eight times lower than what I used to take, which is fucking incredible progress. I'm almost finished. And when I'm finished, boy, I'm going to be doing some shit. I'm Because I don't smoke weed anymore. I'm not going to be taking Xanax. So I'm going to be basically sober all the time just just doing me making videos um trying to live my life you know so look forward to all the content i'm going to be pumping out um i'm going to start pumping it out now guys I, you know i promise i i fucking promise